All right, I'd like to uh, welcome you to my masterclass here. And this is uh, how to conquer fear, uncertainty, and doubt to become the richest person you know. This is my uh, rags to riches story of finding true love and enjoying an absolutely incredible lifestyle, okay? Uh, I'm not telling you this to brag. I'm telling you this because I wanna serve. I wanna help you. I wanna help you get out of the situation you're in. If you want more out of life, you wanna live the ultimate lifestyle. Uh, I think I can show you the way. And so, uh, yeah, really, really excited to share this with you. So um, who's this for, right? Um, anyone who's not feeling 100% fulfilled in their life, okay? If you think you can achieve more, okay? If you're struggling and, you know, maybe you're a young kid and you've got big dreams, you, you want to be a millionaire, you want to live life on your own terms from a very early age. I started this uh, journey at 24. Um, can't recommend it higher. You want to start this process as early as possible to get control of your life, have the, the wealth, the health, the relationships, everything that you need to feel ultimately rich. And uh, anyone who feels like they haven't hit their full potential. I mean, you could be late in life getting into retirement and maybe you worked as an executive, um, you kind of took the, the safe road, uh, raised your family, but uh, you know there's more and you want to shift your identity to something new and uh, become something you've never been before. And this may be in your you know last 20 years of life. So a uh, wide range of audience here, but overall, the one thing everyone has in common is they want more out of life and more out of themselves, okay? So um, why did I build the presentation, right? Um, it was really because uh, I've started a new kind of coaching and mentoring program. And if I wanna get my clients uh, the outcomes and the results that they want, I know I need to shatter their false beliefs that are holding them back, okay? And I need to help them conquer and eliminate fear, right? Fear is the number one thing that holds people back. And the reason I've kind of decided that is I figure if people already knew what to do, then they'd probably be doing it. They probably have the results they want. So there's something about what they believe that isn't serving them that we need to change. And we also need to make sure that they're operating from a state of um, abundance and not, not fear, okay? So I'm gonna just throw out a disclaimer. Um, what I'm about to share may bother you. Um, it may make you defensive. It may make you angry. That's okay. Um, you know, you don't need to listen to me. You don't need to believe anything I'm saying. I'm already very, very happy and very wealthy and very, you know, um, self-actualized. So um, I care about how I feel about myself and I want to help you. But if what I'm saying here doesn't resonate, uh, that's okay too. You know, just know I'm, I'm going into this with eyes wide open. So the ugly truth is this. If every day you're not getting richer, um, it's because you have the wrong beliefs. Something you believe to be true is actually not true and you don't realize it, okay? The uglier truth is that you probably have some kind of self-esteem or self-worth issues um, and you're likely living in fear, okay? And so again, I know there's a lot of confident people on this call. They feel like they've got really strong self-esteem, self-worth, that's not their issue. But if you're here because you want more, the reason you don't have more already is that you don't believe that you are that thing yet, okay? And so that's my thesis here. You know, again, you don't have to agree with me, but uh, that's the root cause, in my opinion, of what's holding you back from becoming your the best version of yourself, okay? So um, why should you listen to me, right? I'm just some guy shooting my mouth off, right? Um, I'm the richest person I know. And I say this hands down. I've got friends who are billionaires, many, many multi-multi-millionaires, and not only would I never ever consider trading my life for theirs, but I feel like a lot of them would love to spend one day in my life, okay? I know it sounds really cocky, but you know what? I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. I am extremely rich. I'm very happy and I have, I live the dream, okay? And so I'm not, a, I'm not afraid to say it. Let me, let me share with you a little bit about my life, just, just so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. So, um, and this is, this is the reason why I'm so rich, to be honest with you. I've been married for 13 years to the absolutely most brilliant, beautiful, kind, passionate, supportive woman um, that I've ever encountered in this world, okay? That's it, right? My relationship with my, my wife is what makes me so rich. But in addition to that, um, I've got an unbelievable family. I've got two daughters who are literally superhumans, right? My my youngest, uh, Elena, she's doing back handsprings on the stage. Uh, Elena and Alicia both do circus performing and gymnastics. And if you could see them perform, you would understand when I say superhuman, 
Um, they are incredible athletes, okay? I'm very, very fortunate to have healthy daughters. Um, I've lived in nine different cities, um, in six different countries, in four different continents uh, since 2006. I've been a digital nomad, right? Uh, me and my wife, we got his and hers brand new BMWs, right? And we didn't think twice about getting them. When I was 30, I bought an Aston Martin DB9. This was a, a goal I had, it was a dream. Uh, terrible investment, really. Uh, I didn't really use it, but it was a beautiful piece of artwork in my driveway. Um, I recently sold it, but uh, you know, I was able to do that, right? Most people, they, they can't buy their dream car at 30 years old. Um, I get to go to fancy fundraisers with my billionaire friends. They invite us to these super expensive black tie dinners and uh, we get to have fun and dress up and go to the fancy stuff, okay? Um, we have a lot of fun. We, we do Halloween, like it's a huge deal in our house. We plan for months to get into Halloween. This is me and my wife uh, on a couple of years uh, just getting dressed up. You know, we, we like to have fun, right? Uh, we go to music festivals. We, you know, I'm 41, but we like to think we're still pretty cool and uh, listen to music and have fun. Um, we go to Broadway shows, right? Uh, we, we make sure that we can enjoy the arts and, and see uh, the best performing artists. Uh, we do family adventure parks, right? Um, and last year, I actually got to travel all the way around the world for six weeks with the absolute best travel companion you could ever imagine. You know, we went to Japan, we went to Thailand, we were in Koh Samui with the elephants, we went to Paris, we were in the south of France and Monaco, uh, Switzerland, um, Barcelona and Mallorca, um, Barbados on a yacht uh, sailing tour, uh, Napa Valley tasting wine, Oktoberfest in Germany, went to Kelowna, met my absolute life hero, Dan Martel. Uh, this guy is the 10X version of me and uh, we did a great ski trip there. Um, you know, and, and what made all this possible, right? So it was a great year. Uh, you know, I've got a, this great wife, this great family. Um, but the the foundation, the, the reason I was able to do that is because I own my own business, number one. Uh, number two, I've got passive income and enterprise clients that pay me a lot of money for the effort and time that I put in. Um, I'm impulsive and I'm opportunistic. So I just say yes to things. You know, my, my friends, the billionaires that I mentioned, they're gonna go live in Spain um, for a year. Their daughters are the same age as mine. We're gonna go too. I mean, I'm about to literally sell my house and move to Spain for a year just because, right? I don't know who else you know that does stuff like that, but that's me. Um, I'm not afraid to invest in memories over stuff. I care much more about having the ultimate experience in life than I do about hoarding and accumulating crap. In fact, now that I gotta sell my house, I gotta get rid of all this junk, right? So. Um, and my wife's family uh, are unbelievable. I got so lucky. I hit the, the lottery when it comes to in-laws and uh, we're gonna we're gonna share a little bit more about them uh, a little bit later on. Um, you know, on the business front, right? I've been really, really fortunate. Um, since 2006, uh, when I started the business, we've generated over $21 million in revenue. And uh, more importantly, we've got to work with a lot of executives at some of the world's best companies. Right, so we get to learn from our customers, from the people out there who are making it happen. Um, the absolute, you know, uh, most intelligent executives in the world. They're the kind of people that search for the kind of stuff that we sell. Right, we sell best practice tools, templates, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, most of these organizations had executives who they were looking for something, wanted to improve in some area, and they would find us and talk to us and tell us what they were doing. And instead of us selling them consulting, we would do research and we'd build tools for them. So we've actually built the largest library of you know, research reports, tools and templates for product management, marketing, sales, strategy uh, in the world. And we've actually been able to license that content to the American Marketing Association and the Association of National Advertisers, which has really amped up our distribution, really helped with the brand and uh, given us a lot of credibility. So um, open book, right? Uh, I don't make that much money. Right, like we're a, I don't know, two million dollar a year business, um, but we we have a lot of profit, right? We we netted, I don't know, four hundred and thirty thousand dollars last year after paying salaries, after expenses, you know, leasing cars, all that kind of stuff. Um, so my point to you is that you don't need to be like so rich with so much money to be the richest person you know. In fact, I got lots of friends who are a lot richer than me in terms of cash and money but not lifestyle, not experiences. And uh, certainly in my opinion, at least, uh, they don't get to hang out with, with my wife and my, my kids all the time. So um, yeah. Um, so again, it's not about the money, right? It's about the lifestyle I enjoy, my health and the quality of my relationships, 
okay? That's what actually makes you rich. There's no sense being rich and having people around you that don't really love you. They don't really support you. They don't want to be around you. They, you know, they're there because it's convenient for them because you can do something for them. That's not rich, okay? Um, so for me, you only really need two things to be rich, right? Number one is, is an outstanding quality of life. So, you know, health, wealth, relationships, and more importantly, time to do what you want when you want. And that ultimately gives you the freedom, right? So what you want to do, when you want to do it, where you want to go and do it, with the people you want to be around to do it. That's, that's when you start getting really, really rich, right? So um, best things in life are free. I agree. Um, but in order for me to get the wife and the life that I'm enjoying right now, I had to go from very poor to very rich very, very quickly. Okay, this is not a get rich quick scheme or anything like that. I busted my ass for many, many years to, to live the life that I have today. Um, but it all happened fairly quickly. Okay, and I'm going to share that story of, of exactly how I did that. Right. So this is me. Uh, geez, wow. Well, I'm 24 years old. And um, I grew up in a kind of poor, then it kind of turned into a middle class family when my mom finally uh, met someone who had a stable job. Um, but my parents were divorced. They were uneducated. I don't think they finished really high school. Um, there was a lot of drugs, alcohol, um, and even violence in my house growing up, uh, domestic violence, which I'm sure had some impact on me. It's probably why I'm an entrepreneur and I can handle kind of a chaotic environment and, um, uh, thrive on, on problem solving and taking care of myself. Um, a lot of anxiety, depression, even bipolar disorders, like diagnosed in my family. Right. And so I had to, I had to, you know, I had to kind of break out, right? Um, so I started working when I was nine years old, selling flowers door to door. Um, and I moved out of my house when I was 15. Okay. Um, you know, as much as I say my family uh, maybe didn't give me the rich person's kind of mindset and teach me how to be a millionaire, they did teach me some valuable lessons, right? So this is my dad. He's a, he's a salt of the earth kind of guy. Um, if I was going to go into a survival situation or, you know, uh, on a ship sailing around the world or any sort of project that involved hands-on skill, he's my first choice, okay? So my dad, I, I respect, I love, um, but he, he really taught me four things, right? Number one was get an education, right? He drilled that into my head from a very young age. He didn't have a chance to get educated. He was very smart, but he didn't have an education. He said, get educated. He also told me, and this is really sage of him, that quality of life is more important than money. And I, I knew that for some reason, really, really young, quality of life. I don't know how many people teach their kids quality of life, but I, that stuck with me. Um, he always used to say when we'd work on projects and renovations, you know, do it right the first time. You don't want to be in the land of twice. And I didn't understand it for the first 20 years when I was a kid growing up, but, but the land of twice is when you have to rework something, right? So you do something and then immediately you realize there's a mistake and you got to fix it and go back and, and go in there. Um, and then this other one, I, again, I didn't really get this one until I was like in my twenties, you only get on the plane once. And I, I think what he was referring to is if you're going to party, you know, there's no sense chasing it, right? You, you have your first drink, you get a little buzz. It never gets better than that. So you don't need to like go and continue and go down this rabbit hole of, of consumption. It's okay to have a drink or something, right? But just like a little bit, you only get on the plane once. That's all you get. So enjoy it, but don't overdo it. Right. And I think that was actually really, really good advice. Um, but what, what kind of stuff did I hear growing up? How was I programmed? What was my software in my brain as a child? Um, it was the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It was, I'm not made of money. It was, uh, money doesn't buy happiness. It was money's the root of all evil. It was money doesn't grow on trees. Um, and so I learned like, if I wanted to get rich and think about money differently than the people I was around, I needed new influences, okay? There was no way that people that talked that way about money were gonna show me how to get rich. And I, I inherently kind of knew that. So how did I escape, right? How did I get out of that? Um, well, I, I, said, I mentioned I moved out at 15. I got a mentor who was a hustler, entrepreneur. He would buy and sell whatever he could get his hands on, cars, this, that, whatever. Um, I worked in sales for a billionaire. He wasn't a billionaire when I started working for him. It was a startup, um, but I was there for four years. He's now become a billionaire and uh, he went to the best business school in all of Canada. Um, and he's in, in, in fact, the person who's uh, moving the family to Spain. So uh, I may uh, get to hang out with them a little bit closer next year. Um, but yeah, I mean, my, my dad said get an education. I put myself through university. I had to work full time and go to school part time for like five years to do a three year degree. That taught me perseverance and hard work and delaying gratification and working hard for something when you don't get an immediate result. Uh, but I was learning a ton. I was working in this company. 
I was, um, you know, around people that had already been through the best business schools. And I was also supplementing my education as I went. Um, and then I decided, you know, when I graduated, I wanted to be my own businessman. And so I moved to Vancouver and I started Demand Metric when I was 24. So uh, why was I positive that I would succeed? Um, you know, to me, it was simple, right? Failure was not an option. There was no, there was no failing. Um, I had to succeed at all costs because I didn't want to end up like my parents, right? I was so afraid to end up broke that I just, I worked 15, 20 hours a day if need be. If that's what it took. I was going to do it, right? Um, so yeah, I, I took a business model that I learned working for my billionaire friend. He was doing research and tools and all that for IT professionals. And I just applied the same model, same proven concept to marketers, right? So it was not something that was coming out of left field. I knew how to sell it. I didn't think the research guys were that much smarter than me and I could do the research and build the content. So I would make 200 calls a day with my friend, Steve. Uh, we lived in a loft in Gastown um, together. It was, we should have made a reality show, but um, yeah, I would talk on the phone, find out what people were working on and then go do some research, develop a tool as part of our product. And this is before like lean startup was really like a thing, right? This was, I don't even think the book was written or at least I hadn't read it. But uh, the way I handled my, my mental uh, like the stress and anxiety and all that of just being in a startup and all that it was uh, I'd go to the gym and I'd go for really long walks around Vancouver like three four hour long walks and uh, we closed some deals right we got off uh, we got off the ground right um, but that didn't get me rich that got me started right what got me rich was when I decided actually uh, to move to Panama on a bit of a whim um, a guy that had invested in my company who I've, I've since kind of bought out um, he had a friend living in Panama and he said, if you're tired of the kind of rainy winters here, go down to Panama, it's sunny, you know, try something new. So I, I broke up with my girlfriend of like six years and I moved to Panama with my friend, Steve. And uh, when I was leaving, one of the guys that was working for us, uh, his name is Bob and uh, Bob's an author and a, uh, an artist and him and his wife bought me this book and it was called The Four Hour Work Week. Many of you have probably heard of this book. Uh, it's Tim Ferriss's. And I feel like I was like one of the first digital nomads. Um, he calls it like the, the new rich, right? And the new rich are people who, um, they, they figure out how to create some income like automated. So they don't have to spend all their time working and they start living the dream life, like early in life. They don't wait and defer until retirement. They do it like in their twenties and thirties. And I thought, you know, I have the perfect business for this because I had this online subscription company going. Um, the website was producing revenue on its own. And I thought I'm just going to like, give all my tasks to my assistant and just try this like design, uh, this lifestyle uh, design experiment. So I was in Panama, I lived there for a couple of years and it was just too hot, right? Vancouver was too rainy, Panama was too hot. So I moved to Medellin because my friend said it's got the best weather in the world. It's like 25 degrees Celsius, no humidity, green, clean every day. Um, and it has the most beautiful women in the world. And I thought, well, you know, what could be wrong with that? So I went to Medellin and, um, I met my wife, we eloped, got married, and uh, she had a really wealthy family. And so I, I now had a, a rich set of in-laws. And um, and I got some coaching from them, of course, uh, but I've also got, uh, I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on coaching at this point from multiple nine and 10 figure entrepreneurs who are um, absolute rock stars, okay? So this is my basic path, right? Is I just started a business, I moved around a couple places, I got hooked up with the right family, and uh, I got some professional coaching and I was around other wealthy people. So um, my lifestyle design experiment, this is me in Medellin when I first got there, it was basically three things, right? Salsa classes, uh, Spanish lessons and going to the gym. Uh, that's where I met my true love, uh, Lisette. Her family had, were, they actually owned the gym. Someone had uh, paid them for one of their warehouses that they build uh, with, a, uh, with a business. And my wife was uh, finished engineering school and was just kind of running the gym for something to do, get some experience. So that's where I met her. And uh, then we went to, she was actually going to Melbourne, Australia uh, with her sister. She was going to study English after she graduated for a year, just to kind of take a year off. So we had met in Medellin and, you know, I had just kind of, you know, broken up with my girlfriend. She broke up with her boyfriend. We decided it wasn't going to be anything serious. Uh, we were just going to date for a few weeks and that was cool. And I, I met her parents and all that. And uh, she said, I'm, I'm going to Melbourne, um, you know, so that'll be it after a few weeks. And um, at, at the beginning, I thought, okay, that's cool. But uh, after she left, I said, you know, I need to be with this girl. There's no way I'm going to find someone else in this world who's better and cares about me. 
Um, so I said, I'm going. So I went to Melbourne and moved again. Um, and uh, we moved in together, like after dating for three weeks. Um, we then got married within six months uh, in Australia. Uh, I can't even believe her parents let us do this. Uh, and then we took a 10 week honeymoon in Argentina. So we were in Buenos Aires and then we went to Patagonia for a number of weeks and I showed her like camping and all the kind of cool stuff that I grew up with in Canada. Um, so that's when we kind of joined the new rich, right? We, we did a mini retirement, went to Thailand as well. Uh, I spent a lot of time hanging out there. Uh, I went backpacking through Southeast Asia with a couple of my friends. It's something that had been on my bucket list for most of my life. So, you know, Thailand, Cambodia, Angkor Wat, right? Vietnam, uh, Taiwan. Um, then we had to come back to Colombia though, to do like the big Catholic wedding, right? Her family said, oh, it's okay. You guys go get married legally, but we're still doing this big wedding. So I had to like, you know, get baptized and all this stuff. My parents weren't like religious at all. So I uh, became Catholic and um, this is where I met some actual rich people. These were my new in-laws. And um, I, again, I, I don't understand what they saw in me and why they gave me permission to marry their daughter, but I'm eternally grateful. Uh, this is them here and uh, on our wedding day. And so um, what I kind of have come to realize is that rich people, they take on bigger challenges, okay? And they take on like risk and complexity and their, their tolerance for pain is much higher because they don't see challenges as like problems and painful. They enjoy them. They're smart, they know they can solve them, they believe in their vision, and they actually love the work. So this is a, a picture of the warehouse complex that my wife um, and her dad are building. Uh, they've got a company of you know several hundred people and they literally develop land and make these warehouses. And so my wife's actually number two in that company. She manages all the administration. And um, believe me, you know, if you think your business is complicated, Try, uh, try doing, you know, logistics parks and uh, sorting through all the legalities and work with construction workers. And I mean, believe me, there's a lot more complex businesses out there. Um, so I kind of had the rich dad, poor dad, like for real. I mean, some of you have read the book, right? But my, my poor dad, right? Less than 50 grand a year of income. I think his net worth is like maybe two grand. Um, and his mindset's kind of skeptical, scarcity, you know, um, attitudes generally fairly negative and critical. Um, Emotions, right? I'd say afraid, anxious, um, insecure, depressed, uh, impatient. Okay, these are the kind of things I grew up around. And health, I mean, my dad, like, he's pretty haggard, right? He smokes, he, he doesn't eat very well, he's not in great shape. I mean, I don't see him making it to 75, 80, okay? Um, contrast that with my, my wife's dad, okay? So this guy has at least, you know, a nine figure annual cash flow situation going on. Uh, I would say, I, I don't even know, but it's several hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, it, it's up there, right? They own these parks. So um, their mindset though, it's competent, it's abundance, right? They're always positive and encouraging. He doesn't even, he refuses to use the word problem. He doesn't think of things as problems. They're just situations that need to be dealt with every day. And the way he and his wife act is they're excited about life. They're satisfied, they're confident, they're patient, they're relaxed, they're they're self-actualized, okay? And they're in unbelievably great shape, right? They eat really healthy, they, they do exercise, they have an outstanding diet. So um, just really, really could see the contrast between, you know, two different ways of living. Um, so I wanna share some uh, secrets of the world class. So I, I've listened to this audiobook probably 30 times at this point, and I think it's probably like the best place you can go and listen for a few hours to um, the difference between average performers and world-class people. And they could be like athletes, business people, it doesn't matter. Um, so it's not just about being rich, it's about being outstandingly effective, okay? And, and really reaching your full potential. So the guy's name is Steve Siebold. Um, Steve, I hope if you ever see this that you respect that I, I wanna share this with the world. I wanna get this to my community. I'll buy hundreds of your books and distribute them. Uh, this has had a huge impact on me. And I want to make sure that this same message can get out to everybody else. So here goes. I'm going to kind of walk through 24 secrets really, really quickly. Okay. So secret number one is that um, you can't solve problems at the level of consciousness where you're kind of creating them in your mind. That's what Einstein says, right? Like, so people that don't know better have a really hard time solving the problem that they're in. So you have to kind of like have a different perspective on things to solve. And I think the... The really important point here is that money is not um, money is not something that you like 
you go and get, right? It's money is the the result, it's the effect, it's not it's not the cause, okay? And the cause of having money or not having money is really about how you think. So the rich people, they they go to university and all that and they believe in education, but what they really learn is that they need to learn principles from other rich people and other world-class people. So whether you're again a tennis player or a businessman, it doesn't matter. Um, the world class, they realize that they need to trade uh, money for ideas or outcomes and results, right? Whereas average performers, they're stuck in the trading their time to get some money from someone, whether that's as a consultant or as an employee or what have you, or a service business owner, um, average performers trade time for money, okay? Um, the second secret is that, uh, and I'm just going to call them kind of champions or world class here, they, they concentrate. Okay, they're able to focus for extended periods of time and they block out anything that's not helping them get to their goal, right? So they're obsessively focused on what I would call a purpose, right? Or a calling as opposed to average people who generally have unspecified kind of loosely defined goals and they sort of don't really even work on reviewing what those are or really doing much action to get them. So uh, world-class, right? Clear purpose. Uh, average performers may or may not even have a goal, or if they do, it's usually pretty fuzzy, like, oh, I want to get healthier. It's not like specific. Um, all right. So next one is um, passion and motivation. Okay. So champions are motivated by the intrinsic value of what they're doing, right? They're in their passion because they're emotionally invested in them. They, they really want to make a change in the world. They want to serve. They want to help. And they are motivated by their, their dreams, right? Um, their desires, their passions, things that they think are wrong with the world they want to fix. Uh, or just what they, the, the best version of themselves could be, right? Or maybe there's some cause they're really, really passionate about. Where average performers are usually motivated by possessions and kind of money itself. They're like, oh, if I just had more money, I'd be happy. Well, that's not true, right? You'd be happy if you're doing something that made you passionate and you got rich along the way because you were so passionate and so successful in helping other people, right? So again, money is the effect, not the cause. Um, I think that the world-class, um, the champions, they, they can really distinguish between uh, like objective reality and perception, okay? So a lot of what I'd say like poor people, average performers, they're so caught up in their viewpoint, their way of seeing the world. And they believe that their perception of reality is the truth. They, they actually delude themselves into thinking that where world-class are much more objective about their own performance, how much work they're putting into things. Um, they're dishonest with themselves, right? And they can really distinguish between, is this a fact or is this a perception? Um, champions, they understand that they need to reflect sometimes, right? They don't just like, you know, stay focused on a problem and, and, and just kind of sit in the room until they solve it. Um, they find solutions by working indirectly on them. So they'll get a bunch of data and then they'll, they'll walk away and they might actually get an epiphany in the shower or at the gym or going for a walk. Um, things just kind of click in their mind. They, they allow, you know, the universal consciousness, right? To sort of plug into them and give them the solution to the problem. So they let intuition guide them. Whereas the average performers kind of get stuck in the mud sometimes. Um, I love this quote from Mark Twain, right? Um, it ain't what you know that gets you into trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. Okay, and so sometimes um, I think average performers don't realize that they're making assumptions about what's true in the world. And um, the world class, they, they don't assume or they're aware that they're ignorant, that they probably are wrong about most things, that they, they want to investigate to, to kind of see if, um, if they can prove out their, their hypothesis. But they, re they don't start by thinking they're right. They start by thinking they're wrong and then try to find ways to disprove their thinking so they don't waste time. Okay. Um, I love this one, right? Your beliefs dictate your wealth. And so champions are very, very cautious about what they allow themselves to believe and even the words around them, the language patterns of themselves and people that they, they deal with. Um, and they, they understand that their brain is like software and it's been programmed by and preconditioned by the people that maybe raised them, um, other influences in their life people they hang out with. And if they don't have the right set of beliefs and mind frame, then uh, they know that they're not going to succeed. And so when you talk to other multimillionaires, they all tell you the same thing, okay? And you might think the self-help, you know, success business is just a bunch of bullshit. Um, and all these guys are just gurus trying to make money off of you. You know, they do make money off of you. Um, but it's also because what they are telling you is true and does work if you implement it. And anyone who's been in their programs and actually followed the advice and actually executed on it, they get the results. 
So yeah, I mean, 90-90% of people, they might not get the result because they didn't actually implement what they learned. So it's not on the, the coach or the, the guru or the person sharing it, it's on the person who read the stuff, okay? So if you're a world-class person, you're gonna constantly be challenging what you think you believe, what you think you know, and reinforcing the right belief patterns. And if you're an average performer, you're probably gonna be focusing on like negative self-talk and why things won't work. And you don't even realize that your beliefs on things are the reason why you don't have what you wanna have in life. So again, world-class, highly positive. They talk to themselves about why they can achieve things. They get the right belief patterns. Um, you know, average performer is much more negative. Um, champions delay their gratification, right? They, they're, they're patient, they're persistent, they handle pressure. Uh, average performers, you know, when the going gets tough, they, they get out of town. Right? They, they take off and champions, they're, they're willing to work hard and not get paid immediately. They're willing to play the long game and, and sort of, you know, invest, invest, invest. And they realize that if they're working on the right things, eventually it'll pay off for them. Um, champions work hard. You know, there's no doubt. They, they're the hardest working people in the world, right? Multimillionaires, professional athletes, anyone who's world class, who's very, very wealthy. Um, they're hard workers. They put in the reps uh, in order to master what they're trying to do. And they're honest with themselves about how much work they're putting in. A lot of average performers are a little bit delusional. They're like, oh yeah, I'm working really hard. And you, you audit their time and they're really not working that hard. Um, champions, they, they actually, they love adversity. They welcome challenge. They, they, they like it. They realize that that's how they get stronger and better. And uh, they know that challenge is what forms their character. And so uh, world-class performers like to say they kind of run towards challenges head on. Whereas average performers uh, run away and try to avoid challenges, right? So, um, you know, everyone that's really successful knows that they only got that way because they were able to, to grow and develop their skills and capabilities through adversity. Um, Self-discipline, okay, this is another one. Um, champions have a very, very high degree of self-control. Um, what they say they're gonna do, and they tell themselves they're gonna do, they do. And that gives them confidence. When you have a high say-do ratio to things you tell yourself, that is the root of confidence, okay? If you don't keep your promises to yourself, on the other hand, you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna start working out, I'm gonna start eating well, I'm gonna start working on this new business, and then you don't do it. You literally take, every time you do that, you, you're taking a, a withdrawal out of your confidence bank, okay? So you gotta be honest with yourself and you gotta deliver on your promises if you wanna be really rich and successful. Um, Champions make decisions. They're, they're not afraid to um, make a decision with imperfect information um, and just know that, you know, it's better to act now on the information you have than just to kind of like let life happen to you. So uh, I think average performers, they're not decisive because they're afraid uh, of an outcome. And as a result, they actually get, you know, maybe not the best outcome. So um, you need courage to make decisions when you don't have perfect information. So you can be afraid still, but you still have to have the courage to, to do it anyways, right? Um, you know, champions keep it simple. I think a lot of times average performers, uh, they overcomplicate stuff, right? They, they think that things need to be hard. And I think they do that because it justifies inaction. They're like, oh, well, this is too, too difficult. Like, you know, I gotta figure it out. I'm not ready, blah, blah, blah. They just, they delude themselves. And I think world-class people, they, um, they expect things to be easy. They expect them to be simple, right? When I thought about making this course, I thought, yeah, I'll read some books, I'll share my story, I'll flip on the camera and do it in one take, it'll be easy. Some people would be like, oh my God, I need to spend weeks and figure this all out and do all this research and get a camera crew and they invent all these issues. It's just not true. Keep it simple, right? Um, yeah. You know, champions compete with themselves. They don't, they don't compare themselves with other people. And I think a lot of average performers are so caught up in comparison, right? Um, you know, if you're really, really world-class, you, you measure your own performance. You're, the only standard you care about is your own, getting yourself to your best potential. They, they get that, okay? Um, another one is emotions versus logic, right? Champions realize that they need to be motivated emotionally so they stick through the hard times okay and when they're trying to motivate other people they realize that if they just try to convince them with like a rational argument like some logic that might sort of convince people a little bit but if you want to actually persuade people you want to work in sales you want to you know make i don't know get what you want in this world that you need to tap into people's emotions 
and what they're feeling and what they deeply desire at an emotional level to get what you want and how you can serve them is you trigger how they want to feel and then you find out how can you help them get where they want to be. But if you don't work on the emotional side, you'll never really connect with your staff, you know, anybody. I mean, yeah. Um, champions feel invincible or unstoppable. I, I tell my wife this all the time. I feel invincible right now. And she's like, you know, are you crazy? Are you, are you like manic right now? I'm saying, no, I just, I feel so good that I'm going to achieve my goal. I, I have my vision and my belief is so strong that I'm going to get it that I just know if I don't quit, I just keep working at it and I solve the issues along the way, I will get that goal. And that's so exciting. Once you realize you've mastered, like that you can just have anything you want. You just need to focus on it, believe it can be true and then take massive action towards that goal. And you've done that a number of times before. Um, life just gets like so exciting because um, yeah, you just start setting giant goals, right? Um, so world-class, they persevere and they will never quit. Whereas average performers, they, they quit too soon. And that's why they never, they never make it. Um, champions are givers, right? They're willing to do things for other people without anything in return all the time, okay? Um, I would say average people are more transactional. They kind of take what they can get. They do deals, they trade a lot. Um, and world-class, I mean, don't get me wrong, like world-class people sell and do deals all the time, but they also do a lot of contribution work, right? A lot of giving up of their time, their money, um, without expecting anything, no strings attached, right? Um, champions expect to win, right? They're not expecting to lose. They, they, they talk themselves into why they're gonna win and they renew their mind on this idea, of course I'm gonna win, of course. At any time like a shadow of a doubt starts creeping in, they eliminate that self-talk and they go get some coaching help or they talk to someone to say, why am I feeling like this? Why am I doubting this? And they reprogram and renew their mind on their belief that they can achieve their vision. I think average performers, are in a constant state of um, fear and, and they talk themselves out of things of like why they can't do something. They're, they're expecting to fail or they're, they're, they set their expectations too low, okay? And so that's, again, a, a major difference between world-class and, and average performers. Um, champions are driven, right? They, they have no doubt they're gonna win, so their motivation is extremely high and uh, they play to win, right? They're not kind of playing to not lose. <laughs> and uh, I think that's a, a major fundamental difference. Uh, champions take risk, right? They know there's no reward if they don't put any risk on the table, but they get really good at calculating risk. And they look at kind of the risk reward ratio, the cost to the benefit, and they're not afraid to lose. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it all on the line, right? And if I lose, I'll just, you know, start over and I'll just get it all back. You know, Donald Trump's done this a million times. You know, I don't particularly like the guy uh, personally, but you, you know, you gotta look at his, his history. He's, he's had it, made it, had it, like a lot of entrepreneurs are the same. They've been able to like rebuild it after losing it all. And that's because of this mindset, okay? Say what you will about their character, but this mindset of the, of the rich and successful believe that if they lose, they can get it back. Where average performers are terrified of losing what they have. Um, this one's a huge one, okay? And it's about ownership of your situation and circumstances. World-class people take full responsibility for the situation they're in. They realize it's not all them, but it's a lot to do with them. And they, they own their decisions, their behaviors, the outcomes that have led to their, their current level of existence. Where average people and, and people that are poor, like they, they're constantly blaming other people for their situation oh, it was this, or it's the economy, or it, they're making excuses and blaming other people instead of saying, no, it's me. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy. I'm not able to actually get what I want because I don't have the confidence to go out and get it. Okay, that's the difference. Champions act of urgency, right? Um, they know the clock's ticking. They got a lot to achieve and, and do in life, and they want to seize the day every day. They get up early. They, you know, they get out there. Uh, most average performers waste their time. TV and entertainment and vices and all this crap because they don't really have anything better to do. They're not really working hard on a, a really tough goal. Um, champions know they gotta learn constantly. It's not like you finish your education after university or, or high school and that's it. They're, they're constantly learning from other people that are like further ahead in what they wanna do. And so they're investing in themselves, their time, their money, in education um, and average performers often, like I mean, I know a lot of people like this, they kind of think they already know everything they need to know. And I mean, they'll get what they're gonna get. I mean, they're not gonna get better. They're not gonna change their life situation if they don't continue learning. 
every really successful person knows life is a constant, you know, um, playground for, for, for learning. Um, champions, all the ones I know, they have coaches, right? My daughter's had like four or five coaches right now. I've got four or five coaches. And they realize that like having a mentor who's been where you want to get to, they can accelerate your path and your journey to getting there. They know all the roadblocks, they know where the, the pitfalls are, and they can help you accelerate your journey. So they work smarter by copying people that have already done it. Whereas average performers, they want to do everything themselves. They want to do it the hard way. And, you know, obviously that takes longer, you know, and uh, certainly can derail them. So uh, in, in summary, right, uh, rich people, uh, wealthy people, champions, world-class people, they take 100% responsibility for their income and the results. They make commitments and they act decisively. They act, okay? Poor people, middle-class people, they shift responsibility and results and their income to others, okay? They make excuses to avoid taking action. They overcomplicate, okay? So um, another, another quick distinction, right? So poor people usually, um, or un, you know, really kind of fully realized people, people that are, they haven't kind of hit their, their best self yet, they're protecting their, their fragile, selfish ego, okay? And what they do is they, they often will be critical and project their shortcomings onto other people around them um, and then blame them for why they're not successful, right? Uh, they criticize, they condemn, they complain. They play the victim card, right? And the rich people that I know, they, they don't have ego, Right? There's like rich people that have a lot of money that are still very ego driven that, you know, they want to have the nice car and look cool and all that stuff. And they really get a, approval from other people is kind of their, their vice. Um, but they're not the world class. Okay. They might have some money, but they're not really truly rich. The rich people I'm talking about are people that are so free. They just want to serve others. Everything comes easy to them. They got the golden touch, right? Everyone around them loves them, right? They're respected, right? They've crushed their egos, crushed them entirely and they consciously have gone through spiritual training and enlightenment to kill their ego they realize that their ego is just fear it's this it's this little child inside of them that's afraid and is always looking for reasons why they can fail and they've superseded that ego my my father-in-law told me that you know uh it's a lot easier to destroy than it is to to, to build or to construct so you know, if you want to be average or poor, continue being destructive in your relationships and everything you do. If you want to be world-class and rich, you're constantly building, whether it's your business, your relationships, your health, right? You're building all the time. You don't waste any time destroying. And, and he told me that you can build, 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 build for days, weeks, months, years, and then it can all come crashing down because you have one outburst where you lose your patience and you resort back to your ego getting triggered or something and you, you freak out. He's like, don't destroy what you're building. Just focus on building every day. He says it in Spanish and it's construir, construir, construir. It means build, build, build. Okay. Construct, construct, construct. And uh, he taught me that the root cause of all anger um, and, and lack of success is, is fear. And it's ignorance and it's impatience, right? You're either afraid of something that hasn't happened yet um, you're ignorant to the truth and the reality of the situation, uh, or you're being a little impatient, right? And, and, and selfish. And all of these come from the ego. So if you can destroy the ego, you can be really, really successful. Okay. So, um, rich people, positive thinking, they expect to win, very confident. They're always getting stronger and smarter all the time. Opportunity, they're, they're seeing it's always around them to help them get to their goals, right? They, they just notice these things because they're focused on their goals and they have specific goals. And they're always calculating risk and willing to take it, okay? They have an abundance mind frame. I know you've heard abundance before a million times, but like, it's true, okay? If you think in terms of abundance uh, and the things I mentioned to you, you will start having an abundant life, okay? Um, what do poor people do or middle class people do? They, they have negative self-talk, they, they expect to fail or they're afraid to, to actually succeed. Um, they have a lot of fear and anxiety and they overcomplicate and they kind of get it stuck in their head. Um, their uncertainty, like if, if they, I feel like sometimes people just like pretend to be confused even when they're not actually confused. They just like, like oh, how do I do that? They're like, well, think about it. Like you're smarter than this, okay? Um, they have doubt. They're, they're very skeptical and they use skepticism and doubt 
to justify procrastinating and not taking action. And you know what it is? It's that their ego is trying to protect itself. It's saying, I, if, I, if I go all in on this and I try my best and I fail, oh my God, it's, something bad's going to happen. No, the world-class and, and rich, successful people know you don't, failure, like, it's just part of the process, right? To get good at anything, you learn a million ways to not do it. And then you finally figure out how to do it. And so you just can't look at it as like this big deal if you fail. Don't be afraid of failing. Failing is just part of succeeding, Right? You can't have a scarcity mentality, right? Rich people are focused on winning, right? They know if they lose, they can get it all back and more. And I think middle-class people, they're, they're focused on not losing what they've already got so far. So like, you know, they built a career, they built, they got a house, they got a car. They don't take any risks. They don't want to lose what they, this little life they've built up for themselves. And I think poor people, I mean, they're, um, they're focused on survival, not making their dreams come true, okay? So to sum it up, rich people play offense, Middle class people play defense and poor people, they're, they're just not really even in the game at all. They're just trying to get by. Um, so what do my millionaire, multimillionaire, and billionaire friends teach me? Um, it's surround yourself with other rich world-class people. They will teach you the way. Uh, and if you got to pay them as coaches, because they're busy guys, they women, they don't need to really help you. Some of them are really generous, but you know, pay if you need to. Uh, take massive action, okay? It's, it, you know, success is all about the action. Get out of your head. Okay. Ask questions to figure things out along the way. When you're trying, you're taking action. You're not like stagnant and thinking about why it can't work. You're, you're acting and then you figure it out as you go. Okay. Um, stay consciously present in the present moment. Okay. This is how you avoid like regret and worry and you just act decisively. What do I need to do right at this moment, each moment of each day to further get closer to my goals? Okay. Stay present. So great resource on that power of now is, is fantastic by Eckhart Tolle. Um, slow down a little bit. Don't rush to make decisions, um, make good decisions. Your decisions dictate your future. So, you know, get the information, walk away, and you'll, you'll arrive at the right decision. It's better to make a good decision um, than it is to procrastinate forever on it. But like, you don't wanna be making them so quickly that you actually make the wrong decision. So there's kind of a balance to strike there between being decisive and getting just the perfect amount of information. Um, you got to judge for yourself, right? But uh, I would say overall successful people, they're not afraid to make decisions and they make them fairly methodically and they, they evaluate like, what's my criteria? What do I need to know in order to make this decision? They, they have a process for it. Uh, set your intentions and review specific goals, okay? So if you want to get into shape, like what percentage of body fat? What's your weight, right? You want diet? Like what do you want to be eating specifically, right? Review these things daily. How much money do you want to have in the bank? right? What do you want your revenue to be next year? What, what place do you want to go visit, right? Like write it down and look at this over and over and over again, constantly, okay? Control your thoughts and your emotions. It's okay to have a, a negative thought. It's up to you though, to assign meaning to things in life and to decide what secondary thoughts you want to have. Do you want to go down a path of like spiraling and down the rabbit hole of just negative, 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 or understand you're like, okay, my brain, my mind is trying to protect me. And so it's gonna, it's gonna look for problems, right? It's kind of like this like lookout. And if it spots something that could be potentially a hazard or a problem, okay, duly noted, right? Thank you for letting me know. But now my, my real self in, 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 in the, the overall, like my conscious self takes that thought and says, is this just fear? Is this part of my preconditioning? Is this what I think I knew growing up? Is this a false belief I have? Like, what is this thought? Where did it come from? Is it real? Is it what I need right now? and park that thought and reframe how you look at the situation with discipline, okay? Um, and realize that anything you dream is possible, as long as it's within the realm of like physics, right? Like uh, it is possible. And most importantly, you can't be rich, really. Um, you can't have the lifestyle of your dreams if you don't own your own business, okay? You need to work for yourself and you need to get out of the paradigm of being just like a glorified contractor or outsourced employee. Um, if you really wanna have freedom and flexibility, you need something that uh, creates a lot of value in the world and has leverage. If there's a way for you to create a lot of value without using a lot of your time, even better. That opens up the doors to mini retirements and doing all kinds of really fun stuff. Um, so I'm gonna leave you with a framework to get rich, okay? Number one, fix your mindset. Review what I said here, you know, multiple times, 
get, you know, uh, Secrets of the World Class, listen to it on audiobook, like over and over again, not just once, like study it, listen to it all the time, refresh your, your mind on it. Um, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind is also really good. Think and Grow Rich is really good. Uh, the Secret is good. Um, you know, The Power of Now, Eckhart Tolle is really good. You know, review and read these things. Good to great is good, okay? And you gotta fix your mindset. Success starts with your beliefs, okay? Dan Martell is one of my coaches and um, he, he laid it out so simple. And he said, you know, to be really successful and achieve at a high level, you need to do three things. Number one, you need the vision, okay? You gotta get real, real clear on your goals, exactly what you wanna have, what you wanna be, what you wanna do. The second thing is you need to have unwavering belief, okay? You need to absolutely believe it is all possible. If you don't, if you lose that belief, uh, you're not gonna get it, right? And the third thing is, is time. How much time do you spend in a state where you have literally 110% confidence and belief that you're gonna achieve your, your vision? So it's, you know, imagine if you're always 100% confident all the time, you always believe that. But what if you're tired? Or what if you've had a few drinks and you're hungover the next day? I mean, we all go through cycles in our mind of being disciplined and strong. And so this is why I've, I've basically quit drinking entirely, is I noticed that when I was tired or hung over, my belief in my ability to achieve my really big giant goals would, would, would go down, it would dip. And so then I realized, well, if I stop drinking or if I just shut my mind off when I'm tired and just don't allow myself to go down like a rabbit hole, a spiral of negative thoughts, just go to bed and then wake up in the morning and see how I feel, uh, and operate in, in a peak state with, you know, great exercise, great diet, all of that. Um, you, you never feel like you're going to like not get it. And so, um, even if you don't end up getting your goal, you feel great and confident and have an amazing attitude and outlook all the time. So fix your mindset. Okay. Have a vision, very specific, review your goals, right. And, and sort of know what they are, believe and stay in a state of belief as much time as possible. Okay. And if you're if you're failing at all, or if you feel like you're off the path, it's probably because you, something has triggered you to stop believing that you're capable of getting to your goal. Um, launch your own business. If you haven't already, you need to be working for yourself. There's no question. You don't have to have your own products or services. There's lots and lots of ways that you can have your own business leveraging other people's products and services and models. You know, that's kind of how I got started. Um, you need to then develop a strategy to solve a problem for a customer. If you're not able to add value in this world by solving problems, I mentioned at the beginning that, you know, world-class people trade in ideas, not trading time for money. And ideas are usually valuable when they solve a problem someone has. They get them a result, okay? So you need a strategy for how you can uniquely solve someone's problem. Then they'll pay attention to you, okay? You need to set gigantic goals and review them even multiple times every day. You need to get coaches to guide you and support you and make sure that you're held accountable to yourself, okay? It's not enough to just rely on your friends and your family. Get some professional objective help. You need to make sure you're living in reality, okay? If your daily habits are incongruent with the results and the outcomes you're expecting, like, obviously you're not gonna get what you want, right? So, like, if you say, hey, I wanna, I wanna have uh, $10 million in the bank, but you spend like 15 minutes a day thinking about how to make money and help people, you're probably not gonna make money. Just like you say, I wanna, I wanna lose 15 pounds, but you don't really consider like what you're eating and drinking and you don't really do any exercise. Well, why do you think, like what's your strategy for getting your result? Like you need to have a plan. You need to know why your activities are going to end up resulting in the outcome that you want. So if you have uh, incongruence between your daily routines and habits, uh, and the expectation your vision, you won't get there. So coaches are really helpful for this. They can say, okay, this is what you want. I give you all the time. They apply to work with us, right? And it's a funny story. So they'll, they'll say, I currently make 50 to $100,000 a year. I want to make 500,000 plus. And I have a question out there. It says, how much are you willing to invest in yourself on a scale of one to 10? And they're like, uh, five. I'm like, okay, so you make 50 grand a year. You want to make 500. You want to 10X your income but you are unwilling to invest in yourself to like learn how to close the gap between $50,000 and like $500,000 a year of income, like that's incongruent thinking, right? And I can assure you that person probably also has incongruent habits in terms of like what they do all the time to try to get results that they're trying to achieve. So it's very, very important. 
your daily routine is what drives your outcomes. So if you want to get richer, fitter, smarter, whatever, you know, you need to act like that person that's, you know, further ahead than you now to the point where if you just keep doing what you're doing every single day, it's illogical, inconsistent to believe you will not ultimately get there. It, it's like unreasonable to assume you won't achieve the goal if you just keep doing what you're doing every day. The key is figuring out what do you need to be doing every day? What action do you got to take in the present? It's all you have to get to your goal. And coaches who have already got the goal can tell you. They'll tell you exactly what you need to be doing every day. You got to trust them and listen to them. Okay. I'm doing this myself right now. Trust me. It's working unbelievably well. Um, then you start achieving, achieving your dreams, right? You, um, you know, you, you align your habits to your outcomes, you know, things start happening. And, uh, when you start succeeding yourself, you know, I think you've got a responsibility to help other people, not only with what you do, but you know, just financially or whatever you can do to help. Um, and that may mean helping them get on the path to success in the first place, share the resources you used, right? Post on social media. It's not about you. Okay. For 10 years, I didn't post on social media because I, I had a great life. I mean, I was living, living it up. But I felt like I was like offending people and, and, and sort of like making them envious about like, oh my God, you're traveling everywhere. You got this beautiful wife and you got the perfect life. And I thought I was just irritating everyone. So I just stopped doing it. And I realized now that that was wrong. I should have been posting every day because people that want to get the result that I have would love to hear what I do to get the result. And so I wasn't, I was being selfish and I was being, uh, I guess just insecure that uh, because there'd be a few haters I couldn't actually help a bunch of other people. So now my coach has taught me, no, 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 it's not about you on social. It's about helping people that, that want to get what you have. And by not sharing, you're being selfish and hoarding that, that, that knowledge and intelligence of how to do that. So get out there, be social, share, tell people what's working for you. Okay. What, what do you do every day that gets you the result you get? So they can at least have a chance to, to see what habits do I need to have if I want to get to the results that they have. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Um, I, uh, I could probably go for, for days on this stuff, but, uh, you know, I wanted to keep it to an hour. Uh, again, I'm, I'm the richest person I know because I've got the absolutely most amazing partner in life to go through life with. Um, she's not just beautiful. She's also extremely kind, extremely smart, and, uh, just an amazing mother to my daughters. Um, I've got a great family. I've got great friends. Um, and if you're thinking, that what I've said in this, this presentation makes sense and you want more to life, right? You want to be around other wealthy, successful, happy people. Uh, rich people aren't jerks. Okay. I've learned that rich people are great. Rich people only get really rich if they have a service oriented mind frame, they've crushed their ego and they're generous and helpful and add value, right? You can't succeed to the level of like, you know, world-class without being like that usually. Okay. But if you want to get around more people like that, if you want to like start leveling up your circle, um, start working with me. I'll connect you with who I work with, right? Uh, that's kind of how the world works. And uh, I believe in you. You know, you can do this. You can you can 100% be successful, but you got to get out of your own way. So go back through the, the 24 principles around what world-class people do differently than average performers and audit that and see like, are you guilty of doing a lot of those things? To the extent that you act like a world-class person in all those areas, your chances of getting to great results, uh, you know, dramatically increase, okay? So check that out. And uh, if you wanna work with us, uh, you can apply. Uh, you know, we can't work with everyone. We, we have limited resources, but uh, if you seem like the kind of person who is who is ready to succeed, they're ready to like let go of the fear, and start kicking ass in life and become the best version of themselves, you know, apply to work with me and my team. Thanks everyone. Appreciate it.